Hey there, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can create a hero section like this on our page, inspired by this template, but we're gonna do it manually. Now, what we're looking at here is the site library template called Simply Cloud, available to Generate Press One subscribers. And this you can bring into your website and it will look exactly like this if you just pull that template into your site. But what I wanna do is show you how we can build this hero section using Generate Blocks patterns. So what I've done is set up just a simple WordPress installation and I have, for the sake of time, gone ahead and done things like fonts and colors. But you can see that here on my homepage, I have no content. So we're gonna build that hero section from the ground up. First of all, what I wanna do is just jump into my Generate Press customizer and show you that I have a couple of things here. So in our container width, we have this set to 1480 pixels. Then if we go back to our colors, we have the colors that came imported with that site from the site library. Just a couple different shades of this blue. And then in our typography area, we have some font set. The font family specifically is Poppins. And then you can see down below here, we've assigned some font weights and sizes to various different HTML elements throughout the site. So this will give us a nice baseline to work with. So we'll just go ahead and jump out of here. Then what I'll do is edit my homepage. And one thing that you'll notice with this site as compared to a standard Generate Press installation is that on the pages, we're gonna go down here to the layout tab. Then in the sidebar, we've set this to no sidebar. Then the content container we've set to full width, and then we've disabled the content title in the elements area here. One thing I like to do so that we know where we're at at all times is I like to expand this document overview panel here so we can see this a bit better. Then I'll just go ahead and click in my block editor content area, and we're gonna start off by adding in a generate blocks pattern to help us get started. So we're gonna go to pro, then we'll go down to hero, and let's find one that looks pretty similar to what we've already just seen in that site library. And in fact, this one right here, hero number eight, looks nearly identical. If we go ahead and insert this, this is gonna give us a really good baseline here. And we can see a number of things have already happened. So because of our global colors and the global styles attached to these buttons, it's already brought in that blue color from the template. So if I close out of this panel here, I can click on this global style for the button. And we can see that for instance, in the background section, the background color from our Generate Press global color is already available and selected here, which is perfect. Now, if we compare this to our site library here, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this text. We don't have a little tagline up top, so we could just go ahead and delete this. Then this heading right here is already set to an H1, which is perfect. I'll just go ahead and paste in this text. And then in the example site here, we can see that the words anywhere and any both have that blue highlight. So what we can do is just select this text, then click on the highlight option here. Do the same thing for the any text here, choose that highlight and then scroll down until we find the highlight option. And we're just gonna set this to the global color here. So that's perfect, nice and easy. Then let's go ahead and just take a look at our other text here. The first button says get simply cloud and the other one says browse features. So get simply cloud and then browse features. And then I'll just pop in the text there. Okay, so let's look at these buttons here. So when we hover, this one actually just goes to black. Maybe let's change that hover effect here. So what we'll do is click on our button. We're gonna choose the button primary global style that's already attached to it when we bring it in from the pattern library. Then what we'll do is go to hover as our selector here. Then when we modify this background color, that's only going to apply when we hover over the button. So we could change it to something like this. That's a little bit too vibrant perhaps. So maybe what we could do is change it to the accent and just change the opacity down to 75%, something along those lines perhaps. We'll just keep this hover text color to white. Then what we can do is on the hover, let's go down to the effects panel. We're gonna add a little bit of box shadow. We're gonna say something like zero, four, 10, and then zero. And we'll set the color here to maybe like 25%. So when we hover, then there's a little bit of a box shadow. And then we're gonna scroll up to the top, go back to our main selector. And what I like to do is go to effects, transition, change this down to maybe 0.2 seconds. And then there's a fade effect to our button background color change and the box shadow effect. So that's perfect. Okay, so then we have this image. So we can go ahead and just grab something from our media library. In this case, we'll grab the actual photo that's part of that site library template. And then what we'll do here 
is go ahead and update this. Now we'll open our site in a new tab and it's definitely looking pretty close. We need to restrict this headline because we can see that it's got a little line break. So because of the layout and the sidebars that are open here, it's a little bit difficult to see that this doesn't actually compress like that on the front end. Had we had our sidebars close like this, we would have seen, but all we really need to do here is just basically do a shift enter to give ourselves a new line. Then we could update. And now when we go refresh on the front end, it's gonna match our site library example much more closely, which is perfect. So as you can see, in just a matter of maybe 10 minutes or so, we've taken that pattern and we've been able to match the site library example nearly identically. Now, another really huge advantage that we've covered in other videos on the patterns is that because we've edited the global styles attached to this button, whenever we bring in a new pattern from the library, anything that we've done to modify this global style, whether it's a button or a headline, for example, will be carried over. So we don't have to redesign those elements and we can actually see those changes in the preview before we've even added a pattern to the page. While we're here, let's go ahead and just build out another section. So if we take a look at the site library here, the next one I wanna build is this one here. So let's go back to our home screen here and we're going to go to click on this section and choose add after. We wanna position our cursor after that section so that when we add this latest section in from the pattern library, it's gonna go down below it and not nest inside of it accidentally. So just like before, we're gonna to go to the Generate Blocks button, then we're gonna to go to Open Pattern Library. This time we're gonna look for a feature section and let's find one that looks kind of vaguely similar to give us a good starting point. So I found the one that I want, which in this case is going to be Pattern 22. I'll just pop this into the page and this gives us essentially the baseline that we can run with from here. Now again, this is using that same button from before. So you can see I brought this in and it's inherited our background transition and our box shadow on hover, which is perfect. Again, we don't need the tagline in this case, so we can simply just delete this element. Then in this case, it says exceptional usability. So we'll go ahead and just pop that in. Then we can just do our highlight effect. Then on the block, highlight and the blue color. So there's exceptional usability. Then we have just a shorter little text block here. So we'll pop that in. Then underneath that, we're going to add in a, another generate blocks headline. This one we can just set to a tag of paragraph. So here on this example site, because I know that these are SVGs, what I'll do is go to inspect and I can actually grab the SVG itself. And then what we can do is on this headline, if I scroll down to the icon area, I can just paste that in and there's that icon for us, which is perfect. Then the icon color is going to be that deep blue. And then we can grab the text out of this headline right here. Okay, and then the intuitive design is bolded, so we can just select that and either control B or click the bold button here. And our icon is actually positioned at the top and this headline is set as a flex item. So what we need to do is go to layout and then set, you know, this is already set to flex, but ensure that's there and then align items as top. And then you can see that icon is gonna bump up to the top, which is perfect. And that's how it looks here in this example. When things are less scrunched, it'll look a lot more clean. So then what we could do is just simply duplicate this like so. And then of course we just replace the content and it will look exactly like our example site. Now to set a little bit of spacing here beneath this headline, this is set as a div, which is gonna have no margin bottom. So to change this tag, we're gonna go to P and that's going to inherit our generate press global setting for paragraph margin bottom, which in this case is something like, you know, 27 pixels roughly by default. Okay, so let's go ahead and swap out the background image on this right hand column. So we'll scroll down to the browse button and then it's this woman on her phone. Perfect. And then let's compare. So we don't have any buttons so we can remove this container entirely. So we can just click on this buttons container and choose delete. And then it looks like our three elements here have a little bit less spacing. So one thing that we can do is control click we can go to margin bottom and let's change this to something like 0.5 rem, which is roughly about eight pixels. That looks much more clean. Okay, I went ahead and swapped out the content here so we can see a more accurate representation. And if we go take a look on the front end now, it's starting to look really good. So this matches our example site much more closely. The only difference being here that this particular column has some rounded edges if we take a look there. So what we can do is go ahead and just click on this div and then on the right hand side, find the border section, scroll down to border radius. And then it's roughly, you know, like something, you know, maybe 24 pixels border radius. So if we update again and refresh, that looks much more like it. So once again, we've been able to take a generate blocks pattern and turn it into something that matches our site more closely. The generate blocks patterns are a great starting point and there's tons of them in there as you can see. 
If you have any other questions or specific things you'd like us to build, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to see it. Again, my name is Jonathan. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.